I heard my favorite video game is having a sequel, and we're gonna talk about that. Hey everyone, it's Underworld Guardian, and Life is Strange is getting a sequel? Who did not- which one of you did not tell me that this was happening? Who is it? Which one of you? Cause... Have you not seen my channel? Have you not seen like three videos on my channel? They're dedicated to Life is Strange and made people cry. This week's song of the week is a folk song by the name of Blindfold by Charlie Cunningham. And it was released on March 18th, 2016, which was roughly a half a month before the album came out that was on called Heights. Um, that being said, it was not on, it was not a single. It just came out like the, the song it came, just came out half a month before the entire album. Basic knowledge. It has won no awards, it's not on any special albums, it's not a cover, and it's not featured in anything. K? K. Discovery. So first, I discovered this song via Discovered Weekly on Spotify, and I found this like back in like... February? It's been a while. It's been a while. So the reason why it's like stuck in my head is because like a few weeks ago I was taking a walk around my neighborhood to get exercise before band camp and this song came on and i'm like might as well listen to it like you know and then it's been kind of stuck in my head and then yesterday on one of the communities i'm on they were like hey let's talk about like songs that you would like to be in life is that you would want to see in life is strange too and i'm like i got a song and it's really good. <laughs> you can guess that this is the song I put for my challenge participant thing was this piece because it fits it would fit perfectly in the soundtrack given the situation going on in the game. So this is why this piece is stuck in my head. For good reasons though. It's a it's a good song. Now we get into the opinions portion of this episode. So please no fighting. What's I know is musically. It starts off in the key of E minor, which is pretty, like, all minor keys are pretty solemn. So of course, you would think it's gonna be solemn the entire song. Nope, it changes to G major at the two chorus sections. And, which is interesting about this is because both E minor and G major, they're relative keys to each other. Same key signature, just on, just starting on different pitches. So, it's interesting to see how the writer of the song decides like, oh, we're gonna start out in E minor and then transition to the relative key of G major for the chorus section. So it's like you have this like sad verse part and then the chorus is kind of happy because major keys are happy. Music Theory 101 right there for you. Another thing I took note was it was a guitar and voice only, which is, I like those types of pieces. Like, especially if it's like acoustic guitar because it is acoustic guitar. I just like an instrument and then another like instrument or voice, like the main th melody and then the accompanist. I like those types of things. That's why I don't like strictly piano pieces because like there's nothing, that's just me. The only thing that's similar amongst the entire piece, besides for the background, stuff going on in the background, in terms of verses, is that the two chorus sections are the only things that stay the same. All the verse sections are different from each other in like some way, shape, or form, which is really interesting and also really hard if you're trying to learn this song, like me, because it's different every time and you're like, oh, I'm not expecting this. And the other thing that I noticed was that the ending leaves us hanging because they end on a chord and I don't know the name of that chord right now, I didn't li I listened to this like two hours ago. They end on a chord But it doesn't resolve. It's not like an E minor strict E minor chord or strict G major chord They just end on a chord that can be in either key. So it's like what key are we ending in? We don't know so it's like ending us on a like a no resolution We have no satisfaction to see the piece end Which is sad. So what did I like? about this piece. I liked the transitions between the, from the minor to the major to the minor to the major are very smooth and connected and not awkward. Cause when you do key changes, you have to, like I know in the, when we learned about in music theory, when you do it in Baroque times, you have to, there's a very specific pattern you have to follow in to do a modulation or a change of keys. 
like, of course, this is contemporary, like, no one's gonna really follow that, but, like, there is, like, when you do a key change, you want to, like, make it smooth, and you don't want to make it awkward, and just be like, why? This key change makes sense. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's actually a very nice key change. I wish I can key change as good as this song. Another thing I really liked were the lyrics, all right? And I'm not one for lyrics, as many of you probably may or may not know. They talk about how everything in terms of emotions or events in your life comes and goes. It's not staying in your life forever. They might feel that way, but it's not. So if you're dealing with a situation now, it's not gonna be lasting for the rest, the duration of your life. So the person singing this piece is trying to get across during the chorus section, during the happy part, um, to try and find your peace of mind because just know that whatever you're going through, it's not gonna last forever. So find your peace of mind and that whatever is plaguing you, it will pass, which I think is a really good message. It's something that, it's a message you don't normally see in modern music. And this piece is pr pretty modern because it was written in 2016. What did I dislike? I didn't like the sound of his voice, but again, that's a me thing. That's just a personal preference. But at the same time, his voice is unique. It's not something, the way he sings is different and unique. It's not something you normally hear. But at the same time, it's not something you normally hear, but it makes it hard to, un to, not un to understand what the lyrics are. That's my only thing. And then, Another thing I disliked is how we don't get any resolution. I'm a kind of classical musician here. I like having resolution in certain cases. Like, I like writing contemporary, but like at the same time, I do like having that resolution. Like when I hear a five chord, I want to hear the one chord. I want to hear that resolution come back to the tonal center. In this piece, you don't get it. So I'm like, hmm, I cry on the inside, not really. Overall, out of 10, what would I give this piece? a nine. All right, just like Life from Prometheus, I would give this a nine. I'm not giving out my 10 just yet, but this is definitely a song I'm gonna be spending days, weeks, maybe months on repeat. That is the end of the song of the week. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing something right with my life. And what are your thoughts on this piece? Do you know this piece? Do you like this piece? Do you hate this piece with the passion of a thousand burning suns? Let me know. If you want to see more Song of the Week videos, if you want to see more pieces that I wrote or arranged for Synthesia, please hit the subscribe button and follow me on social media to stay up to date on what is going on in terms of my channel. And with that, Underworld Guardian, out. It's more what you are. Might have been